I wrote this after a very shitty week. <laughs> We all have shitty weeks. It doesn't matter what you do in your life. It's called Me and the Devil. Life, life sometimes is an X amount of bullshit. <clears throat> is that okay? A couple of nights ago, I was listening to Joe Frank. Right? <laughs> Don't waste your time putting me on some kind of cultural pedestal. My only virtues are curiosity and insomnia. Therefore, don't get too infatuated with my brain skills. I've been introduced to him by the wise men. I'm not that smart, just very lucky. The wise man is a character in my blog. You know, Carrie Bradshaw has Mr. Big in um, Sex and the City. I have the wise man. <laughs> the compelling, gloomy, and rhythmically mysterious depth of Frank's voice was exploring the most absurd yet fascinating possible representations of life. Mm. Life sometimes is a woman looking for non-dairy creamer in the kitchenette, he had whispered, among other scenarios, with his usual hypnotic drum and bass in the background. A music I don't particularly dig, but which is like that small drop of milk you need in your Earl Grey, or the big round grain of sea salt from the snare's hard pretzel on your tongue to your tongue when slightly dipped into some fresh raspberry preserve. Essential to his voice, what makes it just perfect. I was about to slice a tomato for dinner, proof of my lack in culinary creativity, which also helps to eradicate the Italian myth of women and food, which I'm Italian, by the way, uh, because I hate cooking, if not in rare occasions, or for unlucky chosen companions. I was completely absorbed into the story when I suddenly realized I had to change the topic of this blog. I wanted to talk about cemeteries, as I went to the Hollywood Forever for the first time last week with my friend Dee, who had gifted and spoiled me with some very luscious seating for Hitchcock's The Man Who Knew Too Much. I love old movies and I love cemeteries. At first I wanted to talk about when I was 19 and I ran away from my grandmother's deathbed on the day after she died. I wanted to find the meaning of why my fascination with graveyards and eternal silence in the day I had decided to go to London instead of attending the funeral of the woman I had always considered like a mother, mirror to my insanity, the one I had such a twisted and special kindred to but never told her about. It's because soon I will be able to make amends to her, I thought I would write. I can tell her I love her, as I don't recall ever doing it in life, or actually meaning it. I rarely meant things in that past. I always expected something in return from people. <laughs> That's why I love barren grounds. <laughs> My golf past is just an excuse. I had wanted to die for years, just to be buried with her. I never truly believed we got to heaven when we die. I always hoped in some kind of greater afterlife in order to justify the existence of this, the one, this one, but it has always been more of a hope. I never had faith, which is something I truly admire in people, but I truly never had faith. I will not get too deep into how much I love my first Joe Frank, because I hope into something bigger with him on my blog, and because I love challenges. But life, life has been quite a challenge lately. And I thought that maybe I could make a pantomime out of it, something to, life, to laugh about. Because the moment you put it down on paper, something that you already know just a couple of aficionados are going to read, it loses power. It becomes just another meaningless part of 24 hours that must end within 24 hours. It's worth a show for the reader, a strip tease for your eyes, and the perch for me while I plan the next interview to someone more interesting than myself. Which, by the way, the latest interview on my blog was to Phil Hendry. If you know who Phil Hendry is, that was a pretty good one, so you can check it out. What has life been lately? I can make it a Frank Stein monologue, just a shorter version of it, or they will get bored. I suggested with the intention of not fictionalizing it, because my blog is real. I said, 
I stirred the Roma tomato on the spotless white kitchen counter. It looked like juicy blood that I wanted to lick. I was still holding the knife in my hand. Life. Life sometimes is consistently swallowing a dozen hours of toxic and lies and getting something out of it. I have to walk through that shit and it is an exhausting routine. So I try to get as much inspiration as I can, always treasuring Hoover Solby Jr.'s lesson on writing about those whom you despise. Always write about them with love. Life sometimes is recapturing all memories of myself with the hands of two young teenage beautiful girls on my very imperfect, almost naked body when I already knew I liked men and men way older than me. Even back then, still a virgin, but hungry for the prohibited exploration of pleasure. I had somehow removed those guilty memories to only let them surface again, driving on Beverly Boulevard on a hot Wednesday afternoon, wearing a dress that I had refused to wear for almost three years. Life sometimes is getting something you need and love out of something you hate and that hurts you with no healing. Where I am dog sitting these days, the sky looks different, and the writing shelter is perfectly engraved to my own measurements and movements. The other night, I was smoking a cigarette outside on the small patio, where the beautiful garden becomes one with the palm trees on the sidewalk and across the street. With the electric wires so low in the ether that they intricate with the leaves and with the Spanish style roofs of each and every house in the neighborhood. It's a complicated spider web of nature and electricity. There are plenty of calla lilies, primarily in the shade of orange and, and vines of bougainville in a cascade of dark fuchsia from the roof. I just sat there without my phone, without music. I did not take a photo and I just looked at the color of the sky at 10.30 p.m. There is a reason why the shit move is in, in Los Angeles. The light is unique and it makes you remember that a dozen hours of shit can quickly disappear if the writer decides to delete the scene from the movie or even better, to quit the project. Be smart. These were my, gra my grandmother's last translated words before she died and before I left the hospital. Even though it was more of a don shit a shitter because she was suicidal, yes, but she was a real warrior inside and she knew me more than I thought, <laughs> probably more than anyone else. And I guess she was seeing ahead of times. It was year 2001, July 30th, in Italy. Just a few months earlier, I had seen Nelson Mandela in Trafalgar Square. I had trusted a stranger in East London, and I had liked too much what I had said yes to for the first time, my future for the 12 years that would come. Life, sometimes, is making a choice and sticking with it. Life, sometimes, is smelling a liar from far away like a Cuban cigar. Life, sometimes, is not having a plan B because you're just a writer. It's wearing a stained t-shirt all week because no one is going to see you and you look beautiful anyway. You always did. You never did. And who fucking cares even if you did? You never knew how to use your alleged beauty. Life sometimes is being ready for the worst. And maybe, only maybe, the best will drop for a quickie when you least expect it. And your hair is still wet from the second mountain icy shower you've just taken because it's going to get hot. It's not such a big deal. It's just fucking summer. <laughs> Thank you.